Welcome to Old North United Methodist Church. These are strange times. People are gathered all around the world in need. A need of safety, a need of food, in need. Many people are gathered in need of finding their God. I want to say he's right there with you. And what we're going to do today is as best we can worship and praise God and be thankful that we have friends and neighbors who are safe and remember those who are not. This is a service of thanksgiving. It is also a service of joy because our God is with us even though you may have doubts. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the Abroad, the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. 
Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. In Christ your head you then shall know, shall feel your sins forgive. Anticipate your heaven below, and own that love is heaven. Jesus loves me. I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. I hope you guys are having a great day and enjoying this new spring weather that's going on. Uh, I noticed the other day we had a thunderstorm go through and it kind of reminded me of something that uh, happened in the story. There was a really bad storm when Jesus was on a boat with his disciples and the boat was rocking and the disciples were all afraid and they asked Jesus for help. And all he had to do was stand up and say, quiet, be still, and everything calmed down. And in the Bible, from the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 39, it says, He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And that makes me think that... Now that we have all these storms coming through, that sometimes we can be kind of scared. And also, there's a lot going on in the world with us having to stay home and some people getting sick that sometimes we can be kind of scared and kind of afraid of things. But Jesus is always there to help our mind and our heart remain calm and still. And we know that he will be there to help us through it. He may not make everything go away, but he's definitely there to help us through it and make sure we get through it in the way that we need to. So we're going to bow our heads. We're going to put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for your son. Thank you for helping us be calm, quiet, and still. And thank you for helping us get through any hard times and any time that we may be afraid. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to lift those you carry on your hearts and those you are aware of through, through uh, whatever media you, you happen to listen to that are in need. There are folks, as I said earlier, who are hungry, folks without shelter, folks just in need of knowing someone cares. And we are the church. We care. So let us take these people now before the throne of grace in silence. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to understand the world we live in. Every day, all around us, we see the innocent suffer. Certainly, 
Some suffering is brought on by our own meanness and selfishness. Some sufferings are brought on by ignorance and incompetence. And some suffering is simply common to all creatures, aging, injury, death. But there is suffering we cannot account for. There are innocent ones whose only crime seems to be to have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Help us to understand why these little ones suffer so much. Of course, we realize you have not called us to understand suffering, but to respond to it. Feed the hungry, you told us. Clothe the naked. Visit the sick and imprisoned. Announce good news for the oppressed. Is that your reply when we ask, why is there suffering in the world? Do you say in response, go and care for them? If that is the answer to our question, then grant us grace and courage to go and care for the least of these in our midst. Hear us now as we lift the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture for this service is Psalm 23, an expression of confidence in God's protection. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I used to listen to Garrison Keillor on PBS a lot. One of my favorites of his stories is the story of the storm home or the storm child. What happened was his principal at his school got so worried about the country kids getting stuck in town that he assigned each child a home in town that was his storm home. If a blizzard struck, each child was supposed to go to their storm home. Keeler recalls his storm home vividly. He remembers it being a house near a lake inhabited by this kindly old couple. The grounds were filled with flowers and colorful and fragrant, uh, beautiful flowers that, that Keeler was so impressed with. He recalls that his storm home had a statue of Mary. Among these flowers, there is this beautiful statue of Mary. And he was wondering, given that he was a Lutheran, how he would fare in this Catholic home. But his imagination led him to envision what it would be like to spend a night in his storm home. He would be a storm child. Keeler imagined the kindly older couple choosing him, saying, we want that one, the one with the really thick glasses, him. 
They wanted that boy. Well, there was no great storm that year. It didn't happen. Still, he anticipated what it would have been like to spend a night in his very own storm home. He thought to himself, blizzards aren't the only storms and not the worst storms by any means. I could imagine worse things, he was thinking to himself. And if the worst should come, I could go to my storm home, I could knock on the door, say, hello, I'm your storm child. Oh, I know, she'd say. I was wondering when you'd come. It's so good to see you. How would you like some hot chocolate and an oatmeal cookie? And we'd sit at the table, he said. Terrible storm. And they'd say, it's going to get worse before it gets better. I just pray for anyone who's out alone in this. Yes. But we're so glad to have you here with us to be your storm home. I can't tell you. Carl, come down from up there and see who's here. And from upstairs would come the old man's voice. Is it the storm child? Yes, she would say, himself in the flesh. Do you ever long to be someone's storm child? Do you ever dream of having some place to go? away from it all, a place where you know you are loved and welcomed, a place full of hot chocolate and oatmeal cookies, warm oatmeal cookies, a place of green pastures and still waters, a place safe from the storm. My guess is that many of us are feeling that way right about now. Our world is in a chaotic state. These past weeks have seen a pandemic escalate across the globe at an alarming rate. And it looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. Some of us not only want to be sheltered, but we pray that God might shelter our loved ones who may find themselves in harm's way. Psalm 23 speaks to us of the Good Shepherd who wants to be our shelter from the storm. The familiar words and images of Psalm 23 bring comfort to many of us, yet we may also feel a sense of guilt as we take advantage of such comforting shelter. I mean, after all, there are people suffering and dying across the globe. Who are we that we should be afforded such comfort? Yet the words and the images of Psalm 23 echo down the corridors of our lives, calling us into a safe place, an inviting place that says, come in, sit down, and I will be your shepherd, and you will have nothing to fear. But to be sheltered from the storm never makes the storm disappear. The storm is still there. And it is not a license to dwell in self-pity either, to develop a martyr complex. To be sheltered is to be made to feel safe. The storm rages on. The wind blows, the rain falls. The sky turns dark and ominous. Shelter grants refuge. Shelter grants the kind of sustenance and encouragement, warmth and confidence, love and attention that is needed before having to face the consequences of the storm. To be sheltered is not a matter of escaping the storm, but of weathering the storm. It's never been Psalm 23 or any other words of scripture that actually grant us shelter, the comfort. It's never been words that provide the actual safety. It's never even been the comforting images that the scriptures conjure up that welcome us into the authentically safe place. But like a mother who wraps her fevered child in a handmade quilt, scriptures mediate the active presence of our God who grants us the comfort, the shelter, the warmth and assurance 
that we need to weather the storm. The familiar words of the Gospel of John speak to us of God's unconditional love and sacrificial love, a love so complete that God would give to the world his only son so that no one might perish but all, all might come to be sheltered eternally. Our God is a palpable God. Our God is a God who is pleased to dwell among us, setting the holy story within the human story so that the wonder of the story may be touched and experienced by all. Our God longs to be in tangible, touchable contact with us. Our God longs to be incarnate among us and within us, the most extraordinary, extraordinarily ordinary way. The presence of our sheltering God is made incarnate through the gift of the church. It is there, well, here, that we gather together. It is here that faith is shared. It is here that we are fed the word and sacrament. It is here that we come to know what it means to belong, what it means to be loved, and what it means to love. It is here through people like you and me, throughout the ages and across the globe, that God has chosen to make the Holy Presence manifest. Within us, all there is, within us all, within us all there is a basic, fundamental need to belong. A need to belong that is really an expression of the need to be a part of a family, to be a part of a group that loves unconditionally, trusts implicitly, and welcomes enthusiastically. In the best sense of the word, belonging is to be loved and cherished and welcomed and received. To belong is to have some place to go, someone to go to when the storms of life threaten to overwhelm us. When we are truly the church, we are vessels of God's holy presence. We are a gift of a storm home, not simply to one another, but to the world. The church is not just a place we occupy. It is an environment that we help create, a way of life we help to establish. The gift of the church is the holy gift from God. The gift of the church is the gift of God's presence and the gift of one another. We can never forget this. Scott Peck writes in his book, A Different Drummer, that our world has been seduced by a fantasy. A fantasy that says, if we can resolve our conflicts, then someday we shall be able to live together in community. Could it be, if we can live together in community, then someday we shall be able to resolve our conflicts? The gift of the church is the gift of community. It is the gift of sanctuary. In the sheltering sense of that word, the church is hospital. The church is safe home. The church is a people of refuge. The church is never simply a building but a people, people who, even in their homes, become for others, by the gracious presence of God, sheltering from the storm. We are all storm children who have found our storm home. And now, now we have a responsibility to maintain the safety of our sheltering fellowship. And it's not going to be easy. We're going to do it electronically. We're going to do it with social distancing, things that are foreign to us. But we are going to do it. We have a responsibility to communicate to the world that there is refuge here among God's people. Blizzards aren't the only storms and not the worst by any means. We can all imagine worse things. And if the worst should come, 
It is with faith and confidence that we are able to profess, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He gives me shelter from the storm. He brings me peace when all around me is in chaos. He resuscitates my faith. He leads me to those who love me for his church's sake. And even though I must travel through pain and uncertainty, grief and disillusionment, hardship and heartache, I am not afraid. For you are with me. Your hot chocolate and warm oatmeal cookies comfort me. You sustain me when the world hates me. You claim me through water and the spirit. My heart overflows with joy. I am certain that nothing in life or in death can separate me from your love for I know that I am welcome in your presence forever. For I know that I am eternally your storm child. Amen. Amen and amen.